Hello, I'm Angela DiCarlo, and we're back here with Mike Corradini from Product Mentor. Uh, you can put in the chat box where you're tuning in from. I'm back home in lovely Boca Raton, Florida, and uh, also post any questions you have. Have you thought about starting a business in the last six months? If so, put it in the chat. We'd love to talk with you. All right, let's get started. Mike Corradini is the founder and CEO of Product Mentor. He graduated from the Entrepreneurship School at USC. Go Trojans! And he's a fourth generation entrepreneur. And for the past 20 years, he has dedicated his life to the art of entrepreneurship. Mike has successfully launched numerous seven figure businesses and developed two private companies that have made the Inc. 500 list. His team has managed over 250 startups. So they teach based on experience, not theory. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Angela, how are you doing? It's great to see you. Amazing, amazing. Great to have you back here. So, so hello, welcome. Yeah, so last week the show really got a lot of great feedback. I think it really resonated with people because we're always trying to add more and more and more uh, to our plate. And so coming and approaching success from the perspective of what do I need to remove in my life to become more successful? I think it was refreshing for people, especially if they're feeling overwhelmed and feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to learn one more thing, one more skill. And so this is part two in our series of what you need to give up if you wanna be successful. And the cool thing about these, these lessons is, Angela, you know, a lot of these things I still struggle with today, and so I'm constantly improving. And uh, I know that it's going to be very valuable for everybody out there that also is on the road to success, or they're just trying to level up their game and they're trying to be even more successful. So true. And just a quick recap. Last week, we went over the mindset. We went over short-term mindset, uh, perfectionism. Uh, boy, God, there was just so many valuable things that really make an impact in your life. And I know for me, those are things I have to look back at. And I know for you, being a teacher is one of the best things we can do because we learn by teaching. So we take all the experience we have to teach others, and then we're constantly able to learn and grow. So let's let's jump right into Are you ready to, to get into the next five things that we need to be successful? I am ready. All right. So what's the first thing we need to be successful? Well, the first thing we need to give up yeah. to be more successful is your fixed mindset. And you want to think about it like this. You know, we go to school when we're young, then maybe we go to college, perhaps. Some people even go on like yourself and get a master's degree. But the beginning of our life is when most people focus on their education and learning. And that's a big mistake. Right. If you think that your learning is done when you're done with school, you're never going to achieve the success that you could otherwise achieve. And so for me personally, I've actually learned more in my adult life than I did when I was back in school. And it's kind of interesting, Angela, because it's more fun to learn, at least for me now as an adult. And I think it's because I get to choose what I want to feed myself what I want to teach myself. And that's so much better than somebody saying, this is what you have to learn. And so giving up a fixed mindset is really key. And what I have found is that, you know, if you spend a lot of time focusing on your development and knowing what you need to develop about yourself, being aware uh, you're going to get to, to to places in your life that you otherwise would never get. And, you know, I have young kids. Uh, you have a young child as, way, as well, Angela. And, you know, I was pondering this last night as I was putting them to bed. And I was asking myself, you know, why do children learn better than adults do? Right? Why is it that our kids or just kids in general learn easier than us as adults and what it came up with is that they don't think that they know it all right <laughs> the older we get the more we tend well, i mean we get stubborn of course but we also tend to think that we know everything and that's where people get locked into their fixed mindset and so that's the first thing today that you want to erase and remove your fixed mindset 
That, that's a great one. Uh, although sometimes my son says, I know how to do it. So <laughs> he <laughs> says that he has to learn, but sometimes they get that little toddler four-year-old brain. <laughs> But yeah, that is a very important one. Now that's important. Now what else, what's the second thing we should be giving up to be more successful? So the next thing that we should give up Angela is multitasking. And I struggle with this one even till today. Uh, I have post-it notes all over my desk. You know, I arrange them by priority. It's my silly system, but multitasking is really something that we can all work work on and have better focus. Uh, one of my favorite examples of this is Jeff Bezos. I've studied him extensively. And when Jeff has a, a task or a challenge or a problem, something he's trying to solve, he does not let anything else get in his way. He'll focus on that one challenge for as long as it takes for him to solve it. And that's not what most people do. Right. Most people kind of work on this then they work on that. Then they'll switch and they'll go do something else and they don't have that laser focus. In fact, I even read that back when Jeff was in school, his teachers would be like, OK, now it's history. Now it's math, whatever the next topic or subject was. And he would get in trouble because he would want to keep doing the previous subject matter until he solved it, until he completed it. And so this is something he had his whole life. And again, being uh, one of the richest guys out there, along with Warren and uh, Bill Gates, you know, there's something to be said about that. Uh, losing the multitasking and really just being focused, um, you'll get a lot further that way. That is so true. Being fully present and committed to one task is, is indispensable, as you said. Now, what is the third thing we should give up to become more successful? So the third thing that we should give up to be more successful, Angela, is saying yes to everything and everyone. Uh, it is so easy for your friends and family to want your time. I mean, it's a good thing, right? If, if you're pleasant to be around, people are going to invite you and they'll, they'll want to hang out with you and spend time with you. But the challenge is if you say yes to everything and everyone or yes, man, essentially, it's actually going to hold you back. You need to be willing to say no and you need to know how to do it in a way that doesn't offend uh, the loved ones in your family or, or again, your dear friends. And so one thing I found to do to, to help with this is to communicate with them and help them understand that, you know, you have this business you're launching, right? You have this new project that you're focused on, um, however you want to describe it, but make sure that they understand that it's not them, right? If you communicate with them that you have this, this deep burning passion and, you know, you'd love to catch up with them, but you need to work on it. They're not going to be as offended as if you're just being a flake or if you're not really explaining to them, you know, why you're not going to be watching the, uh, the World Series game tonight, you know, or, or whatever's on. And so you have to be willing to sacrifice some of that short term instant gratification for your long term. And it's absolutely worth it. I've made sacrifices most of my adult life. And although at the time, you know, it wasn't fun if my friends were out partying or going to bars or, you know, doing whatever, I stayed home and they thought I was nuts. But now looking back, you know, they look at me and, and they think that they were nuts, right? Because I have the discipline to not indulge in the short-term gratification. So this, the third thing, again, you have to be willing to give up is saying yes to everything and everyone. Yeah. I, and for me, I know that I have to turn off my Netflix or my Amazon and stop saying yes to those shows because they can distract me from my goals for that short-term gratification as well. Not only that, but when one episode finishes, Netflix just has the next one starting in 30 seconds. So literally, you don't even have time for a bathroom break. It's just like you get sucked right into the very next one. And uh, yeah, you, you, you don't want to turn on your TV at night, right? You want to work on yourself, whether it's your skills, your business, 
turn off the TV and grow yourself. Absolutely, that is so important. All right, we said we go through five topics today. So what's the fourth thing that we should give up? Yes, so the fourth thing that you must, must, must give up in order to be successful is toxic people. All right, we all have these people in our life, hopefully at a very minimum level. But when you hang around people that, you know, don't believe that there's better things out there and they don't believe that things are possible for you or for them, which can bleed over onto you, it lowers your average, your success average, as I like to call it. And the converse is also true. So when you hang around people that are more successful than you, your average actually rises because now you're around the type of the type of people that know that there's more out there, that know that they can achieve more. And just being around that is contagious because half of success, this is important, half of all success is believing, right? If you don't believe that you can be successful, if you don't believe that you can actually be an entrepreneur, then you're dead in the water before you even begin. And what I have found, Angela, is that toxic people suck the belief right out of you. So make sure you take stock of who your friends are. And unfortunately, sometimes it's family too, right? I didn't say it was going to be easy. I said it was going to be worth it. So take stock of those toxic people and minimize them in your life or remove them entirely if necessary. Uh, it's one of the biggest things you can do. So true. Now, now talking about the how you pace with people, I was in cross country at La Jolla High School there in San Diego, and our coach said that you will slow down or speed up to the pace of the person you're running with. So he put the you know the fast runners ran together so they would be more competitive. The slow runners would stay closer together, and you kind of you know naturally pace yourself out. But when I would go running with the really fast people, they would run slower to stay with me, and when I was going with the slower people, I would slow down to be with them. So you, you pace yourself by who you're around. So if you want to speed up, you surround yourself with people who are where you want to be, not where you don't want to be. It's a really good analogy. Thanks. So, okay, we said we get through five topics. We want to keep it short. So what's the fifth and final thing we should give up? So just like last week when we did part one of this series, I saved the best for last. Okay. The number one thing and I, I struggle with this one too at times, I think we all do, but the number one thing that you need to give up to be successful is the need to be liked, right? And it's ironic because, you know, we're on Facebook right now and we wanna be liked, right? I mean, we all have this like innate desire um, to be accepted by others and to be liked. And the problem with that is you're setting yourself up for failure, first of all. Uh, you want to think of yourself like a personal brand, like a market niche. And just like any product or app or service or business that you could start, your, your business or your market niche is not going to be liked by everyone. And you need to be okay with that because you can still add a ton of value and help a lot of people, even if not everybody likes you. And so there's no need to be hard on yourself. There's no need to justify yourself. Um, I don't know who said this quote, Angela. Usually I have my quotes in check, but this is a good one that always resonated with me. If you wanna make everybody happy, go sell ice cream, right? <laughs> So maybe buy one of those ice cream trucks that has the music on it, right? And all the kids run out when you drive by. That might be one of the only exceptions in business where you can make everybody happy. But short of selling ice cream, you have to be okay that there's going to be haters out there, all right? Haters actually mean that you're doing something big and important. I think a lot of people when they have haters, and again, back to family and friends, it doesn't just have to be, you know, a troll on the internet, you know, or some random person you've never met that says something that hurts your feelings. 
a lot of times it can be family and friends. And, you know, again, it holds people back all the time. I see this when I'm helping people launch their businesses and they're held back by these toxic people and by the need to constantly be liked. So if you can give up that need to always be liked, you're going to be that much closer to being successful. That is so true. And a lot of people judge you based on what they see on the surface or for that brief moment. So it's hard to take it so personally when, for one thing, if it's like a voice to text message and you're reading a text message, you can't get the intonation of it. If it's a troll on Facebook. So sometimes it's great to hear the negative because then actually, I think one of the things in your lessons is to read the reviews of people, both the positive and negative, to see what they love most about your product or idea and what they don't like about your product idea so you can make improvements. You know, it's about how do you improve it? Use those haters to your advantage because we, we can't be liked by everyone. And even if you're giving away ice cream, you may not be liked by everyone if you're lactose intolerant or you're not allowed to sugar. So it's, it's the closest thing to the most perfect company ever. I truly, I have worked with ice cream. It's a, it's a great experience. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the haters can be very good for you. Competition is good for you. And I know in your, in your product mentor program, you talk a lot about um, analyzing competition and doing SWOT analysis and you, you go through all facets of business. Now, are there any final thoughts you have, Mike? We still have a few minutes left. I'm still thinking about ice cream. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple final thoughts. First of all, you made a really good point as far as when you're getting feedback and you're doing surveys um, for your product, or your app, you know, you might get hurt, right? You might get defensive. You might get fragile. Uh, it's analogous to someone calling your, your baby ugly. Right. If somebody called your son or your daughter ugly, you would take it personally. And oftentimes as an entrepreneur, the same thing happens if somebody doesn't like your idea. Right. And it may just be the nucleus of your idea. It may be raw and unrefined. And you may take it so personally that you don't even go out there and pursue it at all. And that's the big loss. That's the big mistake. Right. If you have those toxic people around you telling you you can't do it and your idea is terrible, you know, not only do you feel crappy inside, but you're probably never going to take that first step either. And so I completely agree with what you said, Angela. Haters, they're not going anywhere. Right. The bigger you get, the more haters you get. So if you can't deal with them now, you're going to struggle later on when you're actually on the radar, right? So yeah. learn to deal with it now when you're below the radar. Yeah. Uh, but my other final thought is the biggest lies that we tell are the lies that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And it's so easy for you to listen to this advice today and just be like, oh, that's not me or I don't do that, you know? And that's cool, right? We know we're not gonna reach everyone, Angela. But for that 1% or that 2 or 3%, right, if, if this information resonates with you and you can acknowledge and be real with yourself and say, yeah, you know, I do need to give up toxic people. I do need to give up my fixed mindset. I do need to give up all these limiting beliefs. Then you will achieve more in your life. I can promise you that. Again, your belief system is everything. And so you really want to think about having a world-class belief system, as I like to call it. And anytime your beliefs don't serve you, you got to let them go. Yeah. Absolutely. One of my friends, Sean Berber in uh, Tennessee, actually, he said that the brighter you shine, the more shadows there are. So just keep shining brighter. There will always be things that deter you from your goals. But, you know, keep shining brighter because we need more brightness in our world, you know. And great ideas like yours. We do. Entrepreneurs are the people that change the world. Literally. I know that sounds a little cliche, but it is true. I mean, everybody else is, is working for someone, helping them create their dream and their change. But it's the entrepreneurs, the ones that have that vision of a, a better way of life or a better way of doing something they're really the people out there to me 
that are the biggest heroes. And that's why we give back. That's why we do shows like this. We don't need to do this. We love to help people. And so again, if you haven't checked out Product Mentor, take a look. We're doing some amazing things for some amazing people. And maybe we can help you too. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Mike, again for another Facebook Friday. And we will uh, see you next week. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you.